for the delay, but our technical sessions got a bit lengthy, and that's why the delay in starting the program. But uh, anyways, we're starting the panel discussion. Uh, good morning and a warm welcome to this panel discussion on the vital topic of reforms and innovations in teacher education, the way forward. In today's rapidly evolving educational landscape, the role of the teacher has never been more critical. As we navigate through the complexities of modern education, it is imperative to assess and implement reforms that equip educators with tools and knowledge necessary to meet the diverse needs of the students. This panel discussion serves as a platform to explore innovative strategies, share best practices, and envision the future of teacher education. By fostering collaboration and dialogue among educators, policymakers, and stakeholders, we aim to identify actionable solutions to enhance the quality and effectiveness of teacher training programs. Through this discussion, I hope that we will be able to set the ball rolling to chart a brighter future for education through meaningful reforms and innovative practices. And in this panel discussion, as you can see on the stage, we have some very renowned academicians as our panelists. I take this opportunity to welcome them all with a bouquet and a memento. First of all, <clears throat> First of all, I would like to uh, welcome our chairperson of the technical session that, that was held today morning. And he is also our panelist for today, Professor Amrit G. Kumar, School of Education, at Central University of Kerala. And Dean of uh, School of Education and Training. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next panelist is Professor T. T. Mrinalini, who is the Professor, Department of Education, Usmania University. I request Manager Ma'am to please uh, welcome and felicitate her. No, no. <laughs> Uh, the next panelist is Professor Rama Kondapalli, ma'am, who is a professor of practice in Manu. And I request uh, Siddiqui, sir, please come on to the dais. I request Siddiqui, sir, to please felicitate, ma'am. Yeah, so Uh, we also have amongst us Professor Venkaya, sir, who is the former advisor, D.D. Manu, as a panelist for today's panel discussion. And I request uh, Vanaja ma'am to please felicitate and welcome him. Our Bhishma Pitamaha, Professor Ghanta Ramesh, retired professor of Manu, is also one of the panelists of today. So I welcome, I ask Vanaja ma'am to welcome and felicitate him. And we also have our one of our very own Professor Siddiqui Mohammed Mahmood, sir, Professor and OSD2 of Manu, who is also a panelist for today's panel discussion. I request Manager Ma'am to please welcome and felicitate, sir. Thank you. 
So with that, we have not one or two or three, but six panelists for today's function. And I also welcome the moderator of this panel discussion, Professor Vanaja uh, M, the Dean School of Education and Training. Uh, a, a warm welcome I would like to extend to all the paper presenters and the participants of the se seminar and the students who are present over here today. So thank you all, and I look forward to an inf insightful and productive discussion. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, so let's begin the panel session without any delay. So the first panelist for today, whom I would like to invite on to speak, would be Professor Amrit Ji Kumar, Dean School of Education, Central University of Kerala. Before Sir starts speaking, I would request Dr. V.S. Sumi to come and introduce Professor Amrit Ji Kumar to the <coughs> gathering. A very good morning to all the respected dignitaries. Already we had an introduction of Amrit Sir in the technical session, yet I want to formally introduce for the others. Uh, Professor Amarji Kumar is a research awardee of UGC and he has awarded with a certificate of merit for teaching based on the student assessment for five times consecutively. He has published several books and research papers. He headed PM National uh, Mission on Teachers and Teaching School of Education at Central University of Kerala, a prestigious project of Ministry of HRD. Professor Amar's interest includes critical theory in education, neoliberal policies in education, and policy analysis in education. And Sir's attempt to build up a broad framework for pedagogic interference to empower teachers and students. He draws a lot from poetry, literature, and philosophy in his teaching and his research. So I welcome you, sir. Thank you so much. Most respected Dean, School of Education, and other respected panelists over here, veteran educationalists, and uh, different uh, uh, directors from various uh, departments, different sections of the university, their students, colleagues, and teacher educators. In fact, uh, 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 it's a proud privilege to be here over here. Is this working? It's a proud privilege to be here with this uh, Maulana, with this prestigious university. Uh, I'll be trying to, uh, I'll be trying to just uh, truncate my speech probably within some 10 to 15 minutes. That's been allotted to me. Uh, uh, <clears throat> first of all, I just, uh, you know, while we are thinking about reforms and innovations in teacher education, the way forward, the first thing which came to my, which came to my mind is about uh, the relevance of teacher education in our contemporary society. Actually, you know. Uh, when you think about the space uh, and time that the public media, that the media that provides for teacher education uh, in specific and education in general, uh, I think it would be pity to see that we get only a very pittance of share of time and space in public media. When you talk about, uh, you know, uh, this budget, probably every year we have a budget, state budget and central budget. Every time budget will get three to four times say, the, the editorial page of all the national daily has been filled with comments and opinions on budget. And for international relation issues, take the case of history, take the case of sociological issues, take the case of, uh, you know, any sort of issues that we come across in the social sciences, we get a lot of space in public media. But, you know, let us look at the case of uh, educational issues, especially when you talk about the national education policy. I would say that national education policy could figure only once or twice in one of the, some of the major dailies in India. 
So the point is that we get a very meager space shared by the public media. Do not the reason we cannot blame the media only. Probably the input from the part of the teacher educators also matters. That's also very important. First and most important thing, the reason which I would attribute to this particular issue is that this shortage of time and space uh, provided by the public media is that education or especially teacher education as such has been reduced into a kind of a skill training. Uh, rather, the intellectualism was an important part of teacher education and education has become a chimera for education system or teacher education system in India. Uh, what we have reduced, uh, you know, we have uh, converted it into kind of, you know, demonstration teaching, micro teaching, skill training and all these kind of things. And thereby the intellectualism of teacher education was missing out somewhere. And that's why, you know, one of the reason why some of the students, some of my, my colleagues, you know, uh, uh, used to tell me that when, you know, you, know, you introduce yourself as a, teach, as a professor or a teacher in a university, automatically the next question is where, in which department, when you say I'm working in education department, education department, education is a, education is a field we are working, we know it, but where are you working, which is your subject, my subject is education. That we understand, but what is economics, politics, history like? You know, the point is that we are so not so, uh, you know, you know, popular through the intellectual contributions. That's the reason why people are still being confused of the state of being having a discipline of education. I would say that NCF, NEP 2020, and all the NEPs happens, you know, once in 30 years or once in 10 years or 15 years. The, the space earmarked by the public media is a pittance i would say and the reason probably would be the major you know uh, you know uh, the main teacher education program most of the people know, do know is bf bachelor of education program BA program oh then finally they will allow oh, you're teaching BA students then we understand oh you're a BA teacher okay so BA is the most popular course in teacher education probably uh, natural reasons are there that we cannot deny also but you know when you look at the history of starting BA program itself we could see a lack of intellectualism or lack of planning or lack of planned movement in the field of uh, you know you know teacher education in India uh, I was looking into the book uh, which was edited by Professor G L Arora and Praniti. Uh, 50 years of uh, history in, in, in teacher education in India, an edited book, wherein Aran Marhotra has a beautiful work. Aran Marhotra, probably some of you may be knowing, the juniors may not be knowing actually. He was a professor of uh, CIE, Delhi University. I had an interview with him some time back, way back in 2012 or 11, I believe, when I was in Pondicherry University. I talked to him over phone. It was a wonderful time, I remember. And I talked to him about uh, the history of uh, starting of this peer program. It was quite funny. You know, in 1960, uh, Central University, sorry, uh, Delhi University decided to start a teacher training program, which is called as Beard. The first time the, the, the nomenclature Beard was used by CAE Delhi University in 1960, only in 1960. Uh, and then what happens, they have given it for uh, uh, the teachers working in the nearby areas of Delhi or within the Delhi city, but it was for three years, working only on Saturday and Sunday. It was not a regular course. Saturday and Sunday, three-year program. So within these three years, these teachers will get uh, the BA degree. So this was the, the prototype of BA program in India, according to RN Marhotra, who started the program. <clears throat> and then what happened, you know, in 1961, NCRT came in. NCRT was flourishing probably in three, four years. NCRT decided that we should stop this three-year program, which doesn't bring in so much of quality. So we will start some two-year program, which is regular, so that we get a good quality bunch of teachers for serving the nation. So then NCRT made all the initiatives to bring out a two-year curriculum and two-year beer program in 1964. What happened, you know? By the time this 1961, this three-year program was initiated, many of the universities across India, only few were there, but still most of them have started one-year beer program, compressing all the three-year programs, three-year syllabus. You compress the three-year syllabus, you've got a one-year syllabus. So one-year beer program was started. I don't want to mention many of the universities because most of them draw a good, uh, you know, goodwill. I don't want to name X, Y, Z university. Some universities has made, you no. Know, uh, churned out money out of this beer program by the time then they were hesitant to stop this one year beer program and convert it into a two year beer program. And then what happened? NCRT insisted. Automatically, what happened? They went to the court. Court said that you cannot stop it abruptly. So the starting of beer program in India was an accident, actually. It was not a planned one. 
one year beard program so we run this accidental beard program for 19 till 2014 and 2040s we draw somehow some yeah, energy and, and a courage and then we introduced a two year beard program and this was the history of starting of this beard program and i would say that you know this uh, accidentalism in teacher education is fate of teacher education in india to a larger extent now let us look into the, the, the way it has been, been because uh, why I'm looking, I'm throwing back into is the reason is that without throwing back or look, looking into the history, history of something, uh, we cannot uh, pave a way for the future. So that analysis is critically important. Now, when you look at this BA program and uh, TTC program or DLR program that we call it now, uh, were being influenced by uh, a kind of uh, system which is not extremely Indian by its nature. Till 1950s, uh, the teacher education programs in India, both uh, this B.Ed. Uh, or maybe it was not B.Ed. Actually, it was called as T.T. T.T. course, teacher training course, and then T.T. I mean lower level teacher training courses. All these were being influenced by the uh, you know British system of education. Especially, we have followed the Edinburgh model of teacher education. Edinburgh's curriculum was as such copied and pasted because it was it was quite easy for us. We were under the British legacy. It was easy for us. So till fifty. This Edinburgh model was followed in teacher education in curriculum, both B.Ed. and lower level and higher level. And then later in 1950s, after, you know, what happened? An influence of America, United States of America came in. So what happened as a result of it? You know, uh, probably I would say the first university to interfere in the Indian teacher education system and thereby providing critical support in revising the curriculum, curriculum for B.Ed. and TTC and all this was uh, University of Columbia. Why University of Columbia? There is an answer for that. Probably because the influence of, uh, you know, Ambedkar was there to a little extent in my, you know, this all needs evidences. But, you know, out of this, you know, that's a problem of Indians, you know. Uh, you know, if you go to uh, Portuguese, you can see the Vasco da Gama's dress, his, you know, shoes and almost everything. But if you think about a person who lived in uh, 1500s in India, we have no idea about him. Whether he lived or not, we still debate over it. Uh, the, I would say that the father of uh, Malayalam uh, is called as Tunja Tridachan, was lived in 1500s. Still, we have no idea whether his name was exactly Yutach. Still, we debate on it. But the person who lived in uh, 1500s in post Portuguese, they have very solid, clear evidence about almost everything of that person used also has been kept in the museum. So we have a historical, you know, lapse somewhere. Anyway, there is no use in, uh, you know, blaming, making the, all this blame, blame game. You know, what happened in Columbia University, uh, Ambedkar studied in Columbia University, and he had a very great teacher over there who is an educator whose name was none other than John Dewey. John Dewey was a teacher of Ambedkar. And this influence has resulted in bringing Columbia University into the picture and thereby Columbia University supported. And then later, Ohio University came into India. A group of teacher educators came to India and they stayed here for 15 days at Delhi and they provided some critical support to NCRT. At that time, NCRT was the, was the, was the uh, agency, agency which was looking into teacher education. And then again, some syllabus revisions were made. And this was uh, that happened till uh, you know 1970s and then after 1970s 70s came into the influence of benjamin blue Benjamin Bloomy, in effect, was there, which was uh, basically from Chicago. Bloomy, in effect, Bloom has taught some of the students from India, especially Professor Ace Umar and I, and rest of uh, some of them were there. P.K. Dave was there. All these people were being educated by uh, Bloom under Bloom, and they bring in the hierarchy of, uh, you know, uh, learning, you know, instructional objectives brought in here. And then the Bloomy and legacy continued till now. I would say that till now in 2020, ITEF has been introduced which has been further fostering a American or United States uh, policy of teacher education. What I would say by looking into the history of Indian teacher education is that we have been followed by a kind of a system which can be called as Eumedicanism because initially European and then later American. So which we combine together, we can call it as Eumericanism. You know, this Eumericanism has been resulted in a kind of a colonial legacy in Indian teacher education. We call it, we, we talk about the colonial legacy. We can very legibly see the colonial legacy in teacher education as well. You know, why I say this is because, the uh, you know, I have, have little evidences for that. And I can say, you know, colonial system work in such a way that colonial system has certain characteristics. It needs high productivity or rather I would say mass production. 
was an important characteristic of feature of all colonial system. They want to produce in mass because they draw raw materials from the colonial nations and they produce in mass. And the second one is they wanted to don't waste even a single moment so that work can be extracted. So tight and compressed work schedule was another important characteristic of uh, colonialism. And the third important one is, you know, repetitive nature of working. Say, for example, when you look at the, you know, colonial style of working the, during the Industrial Revolution, you see the conveyance belt and the person probably you will be looking at this old memory of Charlie Chaplin's, uh, you know, modern times. If you If you are standing on a conveyance belt, you have to do the same work throughout the day. You do the same work of uh, the, on the conveyance belt. When you go for lunch, also you will be doing like this. So, you know, repetition has become the order of day. When you are working with a machine, when you are working with something, you know, you have to repeat the same work uh, over and over. And the third one is you have to develop a kind of a respect among the colonial masters, and that respect was also been an important characteristic of uh, colonial system. And the and the last two one is obedience and i would say all these uh, five characteristics were were beautifully and tacitly uh, you know built into the system of teacher education in india why i would say is that you know visible we our teacher education system has two curriculums the first one is a visible curriculum as we usually talk about in, in different types of curriculum the first one is a visible curriculum and that visible curriculum consists of little psychology little uh, one teaspoon of sociology one teaspoon of philosophy and one teaspoon of education educational technology and all this kind of things. So, so this is the visible curriculum and the beneath uh, which there was an invisible curriculum which was working and this invisible curriculum was drawing heavily from the colonial legacy and the colonial values. The first one was productivity. I was talking about the productivity. Mass production was the order of the day during the colonial legacy and the industrial revolution. And the teacher education system in India also was producing mass production in terms of number. Probably, you know, you have less number of students for learning in some different, different other subjects. But in teacher education, everywhere seats are full. Now, I mean, now there is, you know, glut of uh, institutions. But probably when you look at it, you know, I have uh, a friend in Ireland. He was uh, telling me that Ireland doesn't conduct teacher education, sorry, not uh, medical education admissions every year. But instead, they conduct medical education uh, you know, uh, admissions only after conducting national survey and assessing the need for doctors, they conduct admissions for medical education. So what happened in India, we opened up, uh, you know, B.A. colleges and then everybody started admitting over the period of time. There is a flood of teachers and this flood of teachers reduced their own capability to bargain for a better salary. And thereby this teacher education system beautifully reduced the capability of the teacher to, 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 to bargain for a better life, better living. So mass productivity and quant the mass productivity in all sense. Say for example, look at the case of Mark also. It's very difficult to fail in a B.A. program or in an M.A. program or in a TTC program. If you fail in a B.A. program, that's something like a suicide actually. You cannot fail in a B.A. program. Even if you beat the teacher also, the teachers will make you pass the B.A. program. Because that's the way we are working in the in the system <coughs> and now with the with the introduction of uh, the new technology by the students like you know threatening the teachers or maybe the student feedback and all these kind of things you know the marking system also has been been uh, augmented or maybe inflated like anything and the second one is tight schedule of work and and compressed to work in teacher education system when you look at the curriculum for example in beard curriculum a student who join or BA or M.A., they do not have even a single moment of time to spend idle if they are working in a BA program. You know, you start with a demonstration lesson, discussion lesson, and then critical lesson. Then you go for internship. Then you prepare the models. Then you prepare the charts. You know, the one full year or maybe the two full year is, you know, jam-packed and you have no time to spend for anything out of, uh, you know, for this BA program if you, are, if, you are, if you are in a BA program. I feel like, you know, the teaching is a profession whereby creativity is critically important. And when people are being put in such a jam-packed schedules, how do creativity can be can be provoked or maybe worked in a in a teacher education? I was, you know, in Pondicherry when I was working in Pondicherry, there was a system which is called a shared auto system. You get into the shared auto. Uh, you know, uh, probably you'll be the first person to get into, then gradually people will come, you will think that it will be stopping by five people, then the sixth person will come, then the seventh person will come, and the eighth person will sit on your lap. 
and then then you have to start then then only he will start the uh, uh, shared auto and then probably what will happen you will have the texture of the person who is sitting near to you his you know sweating uh, will be coming on your your, your body and the, you know and then there will be a reek in the in the auto rickshaw whereby the people are all being sweat in the humid climate of pondicherry you know it's it's beautifully can you write a poem when you are in uh, in a in a shared auto i don't think you know then you are an extraordinary poet i would say so the point is uh, you know you are being jam packed in a program where you are not given in a single moment to think of creativity or productivity or critical thinking or anything of that sort and then repetition is another important thing you know the people you know i remember when i was a b ed student the teacher told me amrit you wanted to write a lesson plan i will give you a model you follow the model so teacher give me one model i produced uh, uh, 30 or 50 or more, or maybe uh, 75 more 75 lesson plan with a single model so one model will work will work for a single student every student will follow one single model you want to do a case study previous year students case study is there change the name so that you get the case study and if you want to do a emed research uh, dissertation uh, uh, teaching competent uh, uh, study of relationship between teaching competence and job satisfaction now you change study of relation between job satisfaction and teaching competence a new study everything is repetitively done everything is repetitively done critical uh, you know classrooms uh, micro teaching discussion lessons demonstration everything has a nature of repetition which was been you know the a, a, an industrial value or a colonial value and then uh, 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 thereby even i have, i was wondered to see that emmed students just before their examination in outside the classroom they are cramming by opening there they are teaching meta cognitive strategies of learning strategies of learning and all this you know concept uh, attainment model uh, advance organizer model, all this model they are cramming so a very story state of uh, affair and then the uh, next one is obedience and then obedience in ba programs and other programs have been developed through various means like you know assemblies and uniforms and and internal marks and all this and probably uh, uh, the last two one is respect i would say respect is uh, been developed for official knowledge and technology that's what been on and and for official knowledge i would say that we in our system of education we believe that the knowledge Uh, uh can be approved only if the knowledge is officially produced officially produced you means it's not that government is producing the knowledge but there is a uh, there is a there is a uh, you know a universal bank of knowledge and that bank of knowledge give you knowledge which is official and if you are not drawing from that universal common bank of knowledge your your knowledge is not official and that knowledge is not visible you cannot touch that bank you cannot see who is the you know director of that bank you cannot see anything of it but there is a universal knowledge bank or a common bank of knowledge if you are drawing knowledge from that bank of knowledge you are safe nobody will criticize you and you can speak wonderful terminologies jargons and all these kind of things you will be you will be venerated as well and then uh, technology is another important thing which i was also seeing the last time when i was sharing the session uh, everybody very respectfully see technology as a Uh, as an important solution for almost all the thing that we come across if your problem is uh, education do you have the problem of enrollment in india it's an economic problem it's a social problem right we have a solution through technology make them join through mooc so technology brings in solution for economic and social problem do you have problem in methodological issues use technology in classroom pedagogical issues will be immediately solved do you have the problem of creativity promoting creativity among the students let students join in creativity related kind of activities students will be finishing it off will be developing creativity so what we see is that technology is an ultimate solution or a penultimate to go in almost all the activities that we see i think uh, maybe in 2 minutes so i would call this present system of uh, uh, teacher education as a mega serial system of teacher education i would say we have seen mega serials uh, in our tvs uh, you know uh, our teacher education system in india is quite resembling to the mega serial system of teacher i will talk about the villain first it's, it's unusual to talk about the villain first we always used to talk about the heroes first in my case i talk about the villain first because the villain is national council for teacher education national council for teacher education was supposed to bring in quality for teacher education but national council nct has corrupted teachers nct has corrupted uh, teacher education system and several other issues uh, we we know very intimately we know the first one is this regulator nct regulator in serials you know serial villains will come out with a one strategy to trap the manager to trap the hero and then that will fail then he will come out with another strategy so one regulation they will bring in 
they will fail and they will bring out with another regulation in the in the earlier regulation they said we want stand alone colleges if there is any colleges or institutions institutions sharing your campus you will we will block your we will block your uh, we will stop your uh, you know approval and then now then gradually they said a slight change we want composite institutions and then now we say we want multidisciplinary institution so we were standalone institution because earlier you said you have to be a standalone institution now you are asking us to become multidisciplinary institution where do we bring in this multidisciplinary institution so villain changes strategies that is the nature of villain you bring in one regulation and then you bring in the next regulation sometimes dialectically dialectically opposite doesn't matter but we will dance according to that and the second one is the heroes are managers of BA programs especially self financing college uh, managers they will uh, yeah, they will beautifully defeat ncte probably with different kind of strategies they will uh, the final uh, success will be for the uh, for the managers and uh, court also is there i would like to give a important role to court court is a superhuman or maybe a god where hero always worship so that whatever the order which nct says you can surmount it through the court order whatever the order the nct gives you can surmount whatever the regulation you can surmount it through the court order we will think that immediately the regulation the recognition will be passed, will be taken away but probably in one month and sometime in andhra pradesh i was asked to visit an institution um, with the direction of I, I, andhra pradesh i caught uh, and uh, we went there uh, the manager said you are not allowed to get into our institution then nct telephoned us people from sir you should take some at least photos and then come back we jumped the there was another i was so young at that time and another person with me was around some 60 years of age we jumped into the campus we took some photos and then we again jumped back and then we came so this was an adventurous uh, nct visit and after that i stopped all the nct visits and then uh, uh, and then you know what happened they say uh, court is the uh, superhuman or god and then i would say the comedians also is very important right all the public funded institutions are the comedians of teacher education system because nct put up new in new direction we will fail to follow nct says you notify the post and appoint the people before getting recognition we cannot do that you built up the building before starting the program we cannot do that and we will play like a comedians and public institutions and university i would like to say it's not like a uni you know unitary university but affiliating university system we have most of us universities come in as an item dancer in most of our cinema we have item dancers so universities are item dancers who will occasionally make their presence will come out with some affiliational rules some regulations some some syllabus changes and then and then immediately vanishes there is no roll out of them and then you leave everything to the b.a colleges or m.ed colleges and then what happens this b.a colleges and m.ed colleges the teachers and students will become the chorus who will play dance with this item dancer so we are the teachers and the students are dancing for the syllabuses which are being made by the university system and then uh, i have no time actually i'm just uh, you know moving into and the finally the direction is by an invisible uh, you know group of people which i would like to call it as neoliberalism and the global governance of teacher education and then finally the integration i'm just skipping and and we need to have uh, a reform which is based on the uh, assessment need of teachers and we need to have an assessment of need for kind of teaching demanded uh, by the society and we should need to look into the contextual realities whereby you know you are applying the same context uh, for rule for the public institutions and private institutions a private institution you say that you start your college by uh, after constructing a building private manager will immediately construct the building you tell manu to construct the building and start the program manu will take one year to construct the building or two years engineer has to approve finance committee has to approve executive committee has to approve and all this come and pwd has to take the tender will take two year or two, two and a half years so who is the villain and who is the hero and who is the comedian manu is the comedian and then uh, manager will will take it away and then uh, uh, liberally progressive regulation whereby uh, NCT, I said NCT is the key villain mainly because NCT has uh, uh, de-creativated, you know, actually actually made the teacher education system as a dead zone of creativity by, by limiting the teacher education programs only to B at M -ed and, and TTC. You look at uh, Wisconsin University, when I was in US, Wisconsin University, Madison has a course which is called as MA in Curriculum Studies. And you look at Columbia University, they have an MA in uh, uh, financing education. And you look at Institute of uh, London, 
uh, Institute of Education London. They have a, a paper which is called, they have a program, MA in uh, Educational Policy Analysis. These are the programs, not course. It's a program. You can graduate in MA in Policy Analysis. Will NCT allow for this? NCT will, you run, but we have no responsibility out of it. So we need a liberally progressive contextual system of teacher education. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, all. Uh, Dr. T. Murunalini, uh, she is a professor of education. Uh, earlier, she was working as an HOD and Dean of uh, Department of Education. If you are looking at the academic qualification of ma'am, she is having a PhD in education, and she is also having four uh, PGs, uh, post-graduation in education, post-graduation in philosophy, uh, post-graduation in English, and post-graduation in education also. Looking at the, uh, the outstanding um, structure she's created in the field of, in the arena of education, uh, you see, look at the, uh, she was having the uh, teacher Best Teacher Award from the State Government of Telangana in 2023. Uh, let's have a big round of applause for that. <laughs> Earlier, she held a position of uh, deans in different universities like Usmani Universities, uh, Hyderabad Central University, sorry, Telangana University, Nisamba, and uh, uh, one university that is from uh, Karim Nagar University. Correct? Am I correct? Uh, produced 25 PhD scholars. Uh, in that, two are from foreign A's. One is from Korea, one is from Nambia. Okay, uh, for uh, uh, we are just uh, uh, inviting ma'am for these uh, panel discussions. We are waiting for uh, wonderful points from you ma'am. Thank you. A very good morning, and uh, I thank Manu for making me a part of this panel's discussion. And it's very difficult to really say uh, in, in the short time uh, about the whole lot of reforms and innovations in teacher education, especially looking forward, what kind of things that we are looking forward is really a tough task for all of us. Uh, when we have already in light of, and I forgot my panelists, I. Uh, you know, we shall my panelists here on the days. Uh, professors are there. Uh, I think I should not again repeat the names. It will take another five minutes time. So I take excuse from them that all the panelists, I, uh, you know, thank all of you for being here and also sharing your thoughts. And I'll be learning many things from you all. With the first uh, opening ceremony made by uh, Sir Amrut Ji Kumar, sir, he started on a radical note. I think we have to really uh, take along this radical note to that of more of, as Vanaja Madam said, optimistic kind of things. When we take uh, the whole lot of 
traces from our historical background, not from the time when we started B.A. looking at B.A. program. Sir, you have taken history from 1960s, but the Usmania University has a history from 1928 as one of the oldest B.A. colleges. B.T., as you said, and other historical aspects are there. And uh, B.H.U. has much more, uh, you know, long history about it. This is all post-colonial colonial history or little pre-colonial history. But when we look at the real history of education and teacher education, our Gurukul systems were the most, uh, I would say, respected kind of teacher education system. When you talk about Shavana Manana Nidhi Dhyasana kind of things, Takshila, if you see, Udantupuri, if you see, during Buddhist period, prior to Buddhist period, whatever age, I'm not getting into the historical, but I'm just trying to uh, say a few things that it is not just post-colonial or just pre-colonial kind of history of teacher education, but I always take pride in being an Indian and having a kind of a backdrop of the history of teacher education, where gurus were revered mostly in this country, including the, uh, the king of the kingdoms. So that was the pride of this nation about the teachers and teacher education process. Uh, uh, no doubt, as you said, uh, uh, today, today the intellectual aspects are missing a link, but definitely those were the great intellectuals, how our education system had the Chaturdasha Vidya, Vidyas and Ashtadasha Vidyas that itself gives a lot of credit to the teacher who has personified all the 18 Vidyas, you know, personified children in all 18 Vidyas sometime in 14 Vidyas, which includes all our Vedic knowledge, Upanishadic knowledge and all that sacred knowledge that was there, which was given to children by the Gurus. So that's where I place them as greatest intellectuals who contributed to the knowledge systems of this ancient India, including now the, uh, the NEP is made an attempt here to bring back that old, you know, legacy of India and ethos of India through the system of education, especially teacher education, they are looking forward and wanted to really keep back in place the kind of, uh, you know, rigor that was there, intellectual rigor that was there, the kind of knowledge systems that were existed at that particular point of time that they wanted to bring back. So this is where I take a lot of you know pride in becoming a part of this uh, holistic development of this teacher education program in the present after NEP 2020. So this is how I look at the map. So lots of things are there when we talk about either reforms or about the innovations. No doubt, uh, as uh, uh, to some extent, I would agree that after NCT came into force, the whole quality of teacher education has gone down. Earlier we were, the teacher education was under the control of the universities where universities are empowered to take care of the quality and monitoring regulation. All these things have suffered after NCT, definitely I would say, because, because of the mushrooming of teacher education in this country made this whole quality to come down by quantifying or rather increasing the quantity of number of teacher education institutions. Even till today, when you look at the mushrooming kind of things and Absolute, absolutely no quality in most of the private parlors. As you see, the policy document has mentioned even the document, which is vision document, higher education in India vision 2047 document also came up with lots of those statistical figures and the quality related, quantity related issues they have mentioned in the document, wherein they are make, mentioning about 92% of the standalone colleges and private partners are taking care of higher education system including teacher education. We all know that hardly there are a handful of teacher education institutions which are funded by the, our public institutions are funded by the government. Remaining all 90 to 95% of these teacher education institutions are run by private partners. This is where the whole story of quality, this is whole story of regulation and monitoring failures have come up when we could not really monitor the systems and regulate the teacher education system. So they have remained as only certificate issuing kind of institutional structures in this country today. Then what can we do? You know, this is the whole, whole, whole lot of scenario that is present and status of teacher education, quality of teacher education, quantity of teacher education, all of us are aware. The same thing has been mentioned even in the policy document eloquently, very clearly a page and half they have mentioned about the status of teacher education. Then it is our due responsibility to take on this call and then think about the futuristic way forward, what kind of education, teacher education we need, and how do we restore the quality and bring in the innovations. This is the whole lot of it we can look at. Of course, the same 
rhyme that we have always we cannot talk beyond curriculum beyond teaching learning practices beyond assessment and you know evaluation systems this is the fulcrum and the whole crux of the teacher education process so of all these things even if we talk about how do we design the curriculum how do we adopt the recent techniques or technologies or ai or whatever recent developments are coming up ai ar vr immersive technologies what not you know all these things if we see how do we bring in them and how do we also restore quality along with this technology so technology can definitely help us sir it's not just look at the mechanical kind of technology usage in the teaching learning or in the assessment or any of those things can we go and use little more this technology along with the process you know the whole focus should be laid on the process of training it's not i i do not agree with the word training you know creating humane teachers and teachers with passion teachers with spiritual you know kind of entity when we look at the student teacher relationship what kind of relationship should be there not merely talking about curriculum designing student centric curriculum all these things are mentioned in this particular 47 document way forward it is being mentioned i just take the names i don't get into the details of that so these six broad areas which they have mentioned all of you have heard and read this particular vision document 2047 there they have taken the uh, very important elements in this whether it is about student centric vision document is looking at the sorry i'm unable to okay Th these are the key focus areas that they have mentioned about su student centricity and then research and innovation faculty aspects governance aspects quality and inclusion digital learning these are the key factors which they have mentioned of course all through our uh, policy document also they have taken care of it and when we look at teacher education as such when we say student centric kind of curriculum or teaching learning or Uh, pedagogic strategies whatever we say how do we take them uh, along and then try to really bring in that in actuality that happens in the in the in the in the curriculum transaction or in designing of the curriculum or in assessment and all those things not just going mechanically by using technologies and depending totally on technologies let us little drift make use of them as aids as a means as a supporting system not just bank totally on the technologies so it is most important how teacher acts as a humane teacher how teacher creates a humane teacher a passionate teacher who can who can have a creativity you know the very teaching itself is an art it's not just mere science or following all the techniques and tools what bloom said we have been following so many number of years now they they came out with revised bloom's taxonomy whole lot of higher education system is talking about outcome based learning and they are using this revised bloom's technology what not you know they have become little i would say should not use the word but little <coughs> crazy and mad to just technically use all those questions and question tags and application synthesis analysis they are using so so uh, i would say hard uh, way of looking at the terminologies i am really not agreeing even with vice chancellors we had a discussion when they said about outcome based based on the 2019 ugc reforms curriculum evaluation you know document so we were negating them that this is not the new thing it is old a very old bloom taxonomy and revised also 90s not very new already 3 decades passed out but still all higher education including engineering i tell you the very basic culprits are the engineering people who have brought in and then they started using it and totally higher education they are occupying and saying you should follow this revised bloom taxonomy and all these things so this is where the whole universities are getting influenced and ugc is also mandating it that you should go with the outcome based kind of you know curriculum designing as well as assessment process processes or procedures so still we cannot really ignore so what kind of things that we can look at kind of innovations that we can look at definitely in pedagogical aspect let us make it more student centric definitely student centric not just going again with the rituals how do you engage them how do you make them you know involve and engage in the process of learning this is more interesting kind of a curriculum designing itself will dictate to us tell us and enable us and really empower us how do we engage the children this is more important while designing the curriculum the very words that we use in our curriculum not just technically going with the kind of te technical uh, you know curriculum we used to have name definition meaning concept 
So this is the way routine kind of curriculum was designed. So people started making it more lecture oriented and teacher centric kind of curriculum transaction. So we have to look back and then start working on the ancient system of education. It was more student centric. It was more self engaged. It was more self directed, more peer peer kind of teaching learning used to happen. One Gurukul with 20,000 students and hardly one teacher. How did they manage? How did they manage? What kind of strategies, pedagogic strategies they have used? So this is where the whole lot of, you know, we have to take the insights from our system and bring back that system and adopt them with these new technologies and new innovations that are coming up. Make better use and best use of these technologies, whether it's AI technologies or immersive technologies or whatever technologies today updated lots of AR, VR, whatnot. Totally they are taking away our domain of thinking, our domain of critical thinking, creativity, everything they have taken care of now because of this kind of technology. So let us control these technologies and also still show that human being has got more or rather more empowered than the technologies. We operate them, we use them, we engage them. That's how we need to create the teachers not totally become slaves of technology, but use technology for the better purpose. So like that, whether it is curriculum designing, all those uh, policy document uh, issues related to inclusion or equity, access, these all things definitely we have to take care. And do we need so many teacher education institutions? If at all we need so many teacher education institutions, what kind of modalities we need to follow in terms of policy? My time is over. Okay, fine. So, so many things I, I thought I brought in for the continuous professional, what are the innovations that we can bring in, uh, keeping in view the policy document part of it. Similarly, the creativity also, a lot of things, you know, innovations I have brought. Anyway, the time, she says, is not there. So my whole submission for the floor and the forum and the future teacher educators is that we are human beings and we have to create a human order of teachers in this country. Thank you. Sorry, ma'am, for cutting you short, but we have the other panelists. Yes, I do agree with you. We need to make humane teachers <coughs> rather than making machines and technology as a means and not the end. Yeah, there are issues which we all need to debate a little more and take education and teacher education forward. Uh, I now call upon uh, Professor Venkayane. Uh, he was a uh, uh, good friend of ours for probably the last two decades, helping us in uh, Andhra Pradesh, where I used to work in Nagarjuna and sir was the vice chancellor of uh, Krishna University. I request, uh, and presently sir is an advisor for DDE at Manu. So I request Sumi to just briefly introduce sir to the gathering. Yeah, thank you, sir. thank you, ma'am. I'm so proud to introduce. I'm so proud to introduce Professor uh, V. Bengaya, sir. Uh, sir was the former vice chancellor of Krishna University and the former advisor director of distance education, Maulana Asa National University. And sir is known for his contribution to open and distance learning and management education especially. And during his four decades of academic career, he held many academic and administrative positions. And his academic career has been spent mainly over the areas of teaching and research and management, distance education, academic leadership, and quality assurance and professional development. So as a teacher and researcher in management, uh, sir, during his 40 years of uh, 40 plus years of experience taught in conventional as well as in distance education universities. So he has published several books, research papers on different aspects of management also. And he has also conducted a number of research and consultancy studies and guided research scholars for MPhil and PhD programs. And so his contribution to management also into the areas of marketing management and human resource management. And the government of Andhra Pradesh conferred on him best teacher award in 1995 for his contribution in teaching and learning also. 
the uh, he uh, said authored books and published several research papers in the area of management also so i am concluding by saying that his expertise is also used extensively by different uh, um, recognized uh, distance education council ugc indira gandhi app or national open university and other state uh, universities also in formulating policies and quality assurance systems and developing human resources thank you sir and i welcome you for the panel <laughs> hearty greetings and very good afternoon to all the distinguished friends teacher friends here respected chairman sir professor amrit kumar ji distinguished panelists siddiqui sir professor ramesh sir dr rama madam brunali madam and distinguished uh, educationist vanaja madam and rizwan ji and madam greetings to you all it is indeed a great pleasure and i deem it a privilege to be here and this auditorium is not new to me that i was here several times and uh, coming to manu is always home coming i am very grateful to the organizers of this conference to have thought of me as one of the speakers for this panel and i told madam madam i am not from teacher education department as you are aware i am a right fit then madam said no you are a right fit because you are in odl secondly secondly you are talking on odl and hence if i do not touch upon and embed my views with teacher education i may be forgiven well about nep nep goals the flexibility built in the kind of idealism set in in the nep document is quite known to every one of us because we have been dealing with it several times several debates and all i don't want to go into the details of it but i will talk about odl technology integration blended learning online learning changing teacher role paradigm shift in teaching learning and evaluation and how appropriate technologies could become handy to achieve the goal of 50% of ger by 2035 when the draft report was prepared it was 26.3 it is 27 plus now close to 828 and reaching 35% by 2035 is a is a very herculean type kind of task one alternative we can think of and also the nep has clearly defined under section 23 technology integration odl and online learning and hence there the entire section deals with what technology does and how we go about technology is used teaching learning evaluation administrative support learner support and it encompasses every sphere of educational process and we are now in the fifth generation odl odl has passed through five generations and we are in the verge of entering the sixth generation the sixth generation is the future wave of education already we have been in thanks to covid that all of us were not familiar with online learning online teaching online facilitation online evaluation 
and so on. But COVID brought in a situation where we were compelled to enter into the use of technology. And we didn't know that there were Microsoft Teams, Meet Google, Zoom, WebEx, and so on. Till then, all corporate sectors were using. Education institutions were not using. But we have become friendly, technology friendly. And technology use blended learning, which is very popular now. And online learning in the years ahead will be the future wave of education. Blended learning, which is very all of us are using it. We may not be knowing that we are using it, but we, are, we do use, we have been using, even in the traditional context, it was there. And it is evident now, measurable, and it's going to be much more. And the blended learning of today will transform to a great extent in the years ahead into online learning environment. Whether we like it or not, we are going to accept and we become the changers to the kind of changing context of and learning environment that's going to take place. And in this process, ODL is the solution to a great extent. And I know Professor Ramesh Garu always says that teacher education through ODL somehow is not that acceptable, that acceptable. But as an advocate of ODL, having spent almost 40 years in ODL, I advocate with all commitment that ODL will serve the cause of education in any discipline, in any discipline. So the only thing is the methodology that you use, the rigor you have to observe, the process you have to outline, the objectives you define would be the pointers for us to see that quality is maintained. Once we are sure of the subsystems and managing them without compromising, we are sure that we can achieve the goal. And hence, teacher education can also be done. And Maulana Azad National Uddu University is known for teacher education on campus, which constitutes 40 plus percent of the teacher community and off campus, uh, sorry, uh, on, on the campus and online, that is distance mode, equally important. It has been offering and several thousands of students got it. And the methodology that we use is important, which we have to understand. The methodology, the rigor, we should not compromise. Liberal entry, rigorous process, Strict exit. These are the principles. These are the principles. And nowadays, teachers have to learn lifelong. The skills that we learned 10 years, 15 years ago, are the skills that we acquire today will not be valid after five years. We have to learn to unlearn and also commit to relearn. <coughs> learn to unlearn, commit to relearn. <coughs> then only we do justice. Unless we meet the expectations, not meeting the expectations, exceeding the expectations of the students, we will not be respected. We will not be respected. We must become technology driven. We must be using technology. We must enable our learners to prepare themselves to learn using technology. And teachers must become not the traditional context of teaching the chat and talk and the classroom and the mono lecture. No. It is interactive. <clears throat> it is transactional. It is negotiated. It is peer learning. It is group learning. It is problem solving, case, simulation, service learning also. Engaging the students in service and making them to learn in the field. That's what is important. Service learning. Ma'am? Oh, thank you, thank you. Madam knows my need.
when i whenever i talk about odl i become emotional you must excuse me my voice goes raising without my knowledge so madam did a good thing i neutralize it <laughs> i neutralize it so friends what is important is the teacher mode teaching and learning is no more valid valid in the sense it's valid no doubt about it whatever technology we use we use if teacher is not there trans mean learning does not take this i am sure about it technology enables a better learning technology makes a student to significantly learn and it leaves the students in engaging them just it made them learner centric it is self directive self control self reflective what not and hence learning is active learning is not passive and it registers comprehension application analysis right from knowledge if you want to six steps of the bloom's taxonomy benjamin frank been uh, benjamin franklin okay then that kind of approach is always there learning should take place but the learning is learner centric not teacher centric that is one and the learner mode learning learner's commitment to learn is more learner's responsibility is more because of the digital kind of learning environment now what are the changes that have come about what are the changes that have come about moocs oer digital learning resources and so on now the kind of transformation that has taken place was i think all the teacher educators must be knowing malaysia asia e university offers teacher education only oer based they don't prepare they give the links of the materials available in the oer all of you are aware open education resources are those which are copy left licensed by creative commons you can use them freely and you can edit re-edit localize customers customize tweak mix remix translate localize these are the kind of provisions available in oer so what they do another important open university which did was which did this task was Athabasca Open University, Canada. Not now, a decade ago. A decade ago. OER are 2002 origin, 2012 World Congress. And a lot of changes have come. What was decided was OER are used, the materials are identified by the teachers. If there are any gaps in the material required, they prepare only to that extent. As early as in 2011, Indira Gandhi National Open State offered OER-based e-learning in the a in the area of distance education. It, it was leading to diploma. It was leading to diploma. That is how ODL and online learning have become normal norms today, and they are going to be the predominant way of handling the teaching and learning, teaching and learning. now how how do you ensure significant learning uh, one of the madam is waving i would say i would say i'll take one minute okay <clears throat> andrew or towel the founder director of harvard business school said the cre- i quote i quote andrew or towel the creative evidence of learning is asking questions on quote the creative evidence of learning is asking questions socrates also said the same in a different words i quote you cannot teach anybody anything you can make him think so a teacher's role is to be a designer instructor instructional and also a teacher's role is to make students to think probe for answers think for learning look for knowledge assimilate understand assimilate and register in the term in, in the te- learning theory words ultimately it is application analysis and assimilation 
registration ultimately registration this is what is important i think i stop at this but whatever a teacher does i am sure the teacher shall not only confine to the teaching of the pub domain knowledge teacher education or management education or science education he must also give provide the life skills the life skills are to be included in his teaching and transform the students in terms of building adequate skills by the time he exits the life skills as defined by world health organization creative thinking critical analysis emotional thinking emotional balance empathy interpersonal skills and the last two are known to all of us the communication and it so we have to include these skills as a part of our curriculum and see that's why ugc gave a directive in the choice based education for generic skill based and so on thank you very much for the opportunity yes the thank you sir thank you sir uh, if the gathering believes i have called a fifth person for the panel please clap for it so sir you have fit into the group there was no mistake of my calling you but i am very sorry again we have cut you short but one thing which i will take from you sir yes we need a very liberal entry a very robust process and a very strict exit if at all we need to have uh, teacher education in odl system sir yes it was minus teaching no sir the robust process will include teaching <laughs> so yes if we can put systems in place yes we can also think of uh, odl but with all the systems in place uh, so now it is my uh, proud privilege as we already have labeled him the dronacharya and the bhishma pita for all of us uh, professor ganta ramesh sir to come on to the uh, it will be dr firdos tabassum who will be introducing sir for us as briefly as possible respected our beloved dean professor m vinaya ma'am hod professor shain sheikh ma'am respected delegates sitting on the dais professor manali ma'am professor venkaya sir professor rama ma'am and of the dais and all the people sitting of the dais good morning and assalam alaikum i dr fidos tabassum is privileged to introduce our panelist professor ganta ramesh sir a dedicated teacher a able administrator and a passionate educator professor ganta ramesh sir has rendered significant services to teacher education and higher education domain for over 3 and 1/2 decades at the state and national level professor ganta ramesh was a full bright visitor fellow beside being ugc fellow sir has published several research papers and books and one of his book published and translated in chinese language and published in china also bas, bas, bas. thank you <laughs> good afternoon distinguished panelists and dais and my learned colleagues in the hall first i have to appreciate the efforts of the school of education manu for initiating a discussion on a very important topic yesterday we had a very interesting academic deliberations today it is focused on teacher education it reminds me just now venkay sir i thought i don't think that no, no, i don't want to use that word from ramesh now i expect the same from the entire learn panelists because teacher education i begin with one sentence who is not competent to speak on teacher education everybody 
but having associated with almost three decades with the teacher education i feel yeah because the nature of the teacher education allowed people from the cross section of the society that is why everybody is talking on teacher education that is not the case with any other profession if doctors are sitting if i go there and say something i will simply ask to exit is the case with law profession or any other profession but at the same time teaching is the the noblest profession maybe the reason we are accommodating now coming to my young colleague from prem ha huh? what amrut professor amrut he beautifully presented the role of the nctte it a villain hero hero in and so on and so forth having associated with nct from incep- from its inception the nct act is only the act in this country which is scrutinized by the apex court several times but they could not alter a single line whereas the medical council of india act underwent amendments act act every act and kalik the reason being not with the nct and its act the reason is with the magnanimity of the teacher educators in this country the nct came into existence against b ed commercialization i don't want to use the odl it will hurt professor venkai gar commercialization of teacher education annamalai university used to enroll 3 lakh candidates for one year is the case with madurai kamaraj with the case with himachal pradesh university they used to enroll lakhs of students i myself is responsible for closure of annamalai university their b ed correspondence to protect teacher education from commercialization nct has come into existence and subsequently the same nct is aided by the fellows coming from the same commercial institutions who has to save this discipline of teacher education and always we take the examples of other countries for example manpower planning that we have decided in the first meeting of the national council that how many teachers we need the project that time we spent around 27 lakhs to get the information from all the states and compile a report what will be the projected requirement of school teachers in this country but unfortunately the fellow who has come from odl he has kept that report in the store cold age, cold storage because we can make an a statement this teacher education i will give another example we know many universities are going without teachers we all struggled after amendment to the nct act in 2014 where the nct has stipulated the required number of teachers fortunately our own colleague happens to be the ugc chairperson he has sanctioned almost 5 to 600 positions to all central universities he has written a letter you send us the proposal for the establishment of schools of education that is how in all central universities now they are placed around to 300 400 faculty members including manu but sometimes i feel as a person coming from the beginning of or at least the first generation to the present day i was under impression that if the faculty is provided to the universities we can bring 
qualitative change in teacher education but my expectation is not correct there are departments with huge number of faculty even before their presence or after their presence absolutely there is no much difference which can be observable i am not passing any general i am following my colleague's presentation sir even today the nct is going without a chairperson for the last 10 years but that we can't simply say that government is not interested none other than the prime minister realized the importance of teacher and teacher preparation in a single sentence he has stated that acha shiksha acche shikshak that speaks volumes of their concern towards teacher education and it is only the teacher education which attracted the attention of the apex court and they directed the then government to constitute a committee and that committee suggested creation of inter university center for teacher education we have only five six areas which were identified they are very important in the education for which we have the centers for that inter university centers teacher education is one subsequently fellows they misinterpreted the idea of why for what that iuct is constituted and they diluted everything now there are only walls and people who are nothing to do with the teacher education are running the show so now every teacher educator should raise to the occasion every teacher educator should introspect themselves where we went wrong not that i am not saying that others should not speak about it whoever make any comment about teacher education we should take it very consciously and address the issues otherwise the day will come where the society may say that or the community may say that or the nation may say that we don't require any training for teacher anybody can teach in the class there is going to be a big threat to the teacher education in this country in the days to come when we talk of reforms what reforms we are going on debating itep itep what is itep is it fallen down from the sky there is no reform everything according to the time things will move and something will come the education commission conceived the longer the duration of teacher orientation will be the better quality teachers in their commission and the ncert is running the four year integrated course and this country without any policy or any intervention we are going on trying to make the system more effective by way of giving so many new interventions we are not able to follow the same your iais cte diet scheme is such a good scheme within 5 years people diluted because one ias officer wants that this should not be this pandit madan mohan malaviya scheme where it has gone nobody knows one ias fellow came and he started saying that why only it is meant for teacher education people it should be open for everyone i will say give one example i am invited to batinda where they spent about 60000 on my travel when i looked at the the participants one is with punjabi language another is botany another one is sanskrit and only three are from education it is sponsored by pandit madan mohan malaviya for teachers and teacher educators right now. so the thing is teacher education is in a turmoil unless all teacher educators raise to the occasion and protect the system and odl sir last week i attended a meeting in delhi the odl people want to offer teacher education through both formal informal why there should be a restriction to enrollment i do agree with the philosophy of odl i never opposed odl because that should limit itself only to the in service program 
एम्पावरमेंट ऑफ द वर्किंग टीचर्स नॉट फॉर डिग्री बांटने के लिए नहीं है बट बिकॉज वी नो इट दो वी इंक्लूडेड इन दिन रेगुलेशन वन शुड हैव द फर्स्ट ट्रेनिंग थ्रू ओनली थ्रू फेस टू फेस मोड नाउ इग्नो ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड आई टेप नाउ दे वॉन्ट टू मेक इट ओपन थ्रू वोडियल if they start enrolling your manu will also be closed so this is what is happening because this kind of experimentation and policy decisions should not be rather allowed in teacher education there should be some time that is to be given in nep for example we are one second because are itna bishmacharya one second yes sir so NEP. We are talking as if NEP, NEP, as if it is Bhagavad Gita. Okay, it is Bhagavad Gita. What is teacher education? They have stated so many things. What is the alternative that they suggested? One year B. Ed, two year B. Ed, three year B. Ed, four year. What is this? Can an MSc student, without any pre-orientation in teaching, can acquire all the skills required by virtue of his master's degree? within one year to teach effectively the same subject in the school all these years never i spoke all these limitations so therefore young friends those who join manu by virtue of ved prakash and the nct you are all here develop some sort of commitment to your profession and raise to the occasion introspect yourself because इवन टीचिंग प्रैक्टिस देखने जाने में भी दिक्कत है समझता है हम स्कूल जाना है क्या इफ दट इज दिएशन ऑफ टीचर एजुकेशन थिंग्स आर नॉट गोइंग टू मेक एनी डिफरेंस इट्स एन आई टाइम एंड अनदर माई यंग कलीग मृणाली ऑल दीज इयर्स आई एम फॉलोइंग हर टूडे शी अटेड वन इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग वट इज दैट वी हैव टू शिफ्ट फ्रॉम टेक्नोलॉजी everybody morning also technology technology there was a book written by herbert reed in 1960s the title is redemption of the robo now we don't require technology is not this the the solution for all the problems are ye school mein the the teaching the technology has gone into such a negative direction people just simply present the ppt and they go on read it as if the students are not literate that is not technology what people wants in terms of integration so you have to read both the sides of the coin and anyhow teacher education is going to sustain the present government is trying to extend all the support it is only the teacher educators like amrut and other youngsters should come forward protect the profession carry forward it because we strived our level best we could not succeed but it should not die it should not go without teacher education we should all the best thank you very much uh, thank you sir yes sir the baton is still in your hand but i think more towards our hand and we will definitely take it forward uh, without any delay now i request uh, professor rama madam uh, and she say she does not need any introduction yeah. uh, so we will ask samad only to help madam in making her presentation i'll just conclude in 5 minutes with one slide okay um, uh, respected panelists on the dais and the most revered teachers and loved students Oh, so sorry. Okay, uh, most loved students. Um, uh, you know, I also worked with NCT. You know, and you know, there's a lot of things which happen. You know, I worked with AICT. I worked with Ministry. Now I'm working with you all in the departments. So all levels I have undergone. I have seen tsunamis at all levels. Okay. So you know. Uh, and put it to the other side can just turn the laptop no oh okay okay so uh, you know uh, 
uh, all these criticisms um, do come in, you know, and any change which takes place uh, uh, has to go through bad weather. And all experimentations are not a success because diversity of this country is so huge, so huge. So let I'll not dwell on those topics, uh, but to make a conclusion, uh, I would like to tell that there is a lot of reform which is happening in the school system, school education or schooling. Okay. Also, simultaneously, there is a lot of reform uh, which is happening in the higher education segment as well. Now, there are two statements in the news, global news. Uh, if you start reading, there are two statements on which I'll just conclude my thing. One, it says that accumulation of uh, 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 educators in terms of quantity, accumulation of educators in terms of quality. Okay, so whether we have to look at quality educator accumulation, educated accumulation, or quantity wise educated accumulation. Now we are in a time when we are in the quantity accumulated education or educators because we always hear there's a lot of unemployment existing in any profession, let it be teaching. You say that I don't get a good teacher. I do. We don't have good teachers to teach, but there is a mushrooming of this. There are so many trained teachers who are coming on board, who are getting net qualified, everything tech qualified, but there is uh, no good teacher available to teach on this, uh, you know, on the ground. So there's a quantitative expansion leading to unemployment because of not inculcating the right skills into the um, uh, you know, uh, into the educated or educators, whatever you call, uh, which really meets the requirements or needs of the school system. So who are we to blame? Is it NCTE? Is it the reform which has been suggested? Or is it the implementers? Is it the implementers? You know, this is, these are the questions. And if you look at quality, you know, quality always did exist. Otherwise, the system would not have thrived. The, but the qualitative accumulation has been so small and the quantitative accumulation has been too large. So the, we, how do we balance this is a question now for us. So this is what all of us should start thinking when we talk of this topic of shaping the future of education of 2047. It should be a balanced approach of both quantity and quality. And it is the change of the attitude of the professionals in whichever profession we exist and the type of commitment and with passion with which they get engaged is the only thing which is going to make a difference. And that is the only thing which is going to improve the quality of any system. This is one uh, thing. Now, if you look at the second uh, type of thing, you know, there's a wave of education now called as Education 5.0. In this Education 5.0, if you try to map our NEP, you see that education is one. There is no school education, higher education, primary education, elementary education, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's where the quality improvement component comes into picture. It's if you see a statement uh, in the economic uh, reviews, they say that the longer the uh, this uh, person uh, engages into education, the more economic benefit happens. That is an old statement. It now doesn't stand. Immaterial of my number of years of pursuit of education, if I don't have the type of skills required by my uh, market uh, or industry or my employer, you are not going to benefit economically. So that is where the picture of unemployment comes. So the number of years of education or the longer the duration of education a person pursues 
is not going to improve the economic development of either the society or an individual. It is the type of attitude, the type of soft skills and generic skills, and the type of commitment and passion one has to, uh, one has, which is going to improve the quality of the system. So to conclude, what I would like to tell you, you know, let us not get into a blame game. If you look at the curriculum, there's a immediate need to reform the curriculum one side so that it gets merged with the systemic reforms across education and not just look at yourself being uh, going to you know teacher educators teaching teachers who will only go into schools no they have to do social research they have to be researchers they have to engage with the community and they have to be the societal pillars of this organization of the whole globe. That's what the change if a teacher educator can bring, then there will be a sort of appreciation of the system. Now, only to conclude, I'm telling you, so you need to prepare a teacher who is self-empowered, who is who has a lot of autonomy, who can take the autonomy. Nobody will give you autonomy. You have to make autonomy for yourself and make every aspect of your activity both in your professional and your personal life, inclusive. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rama, ma'am. Yes, uh, you'll have to give us another day where we want to hear from you in a, a more extensively and more uh, detailed way. Uh, now, I request Mohammad Mushayid, sir, a former HOD and our colleague, to introduce, sir, in as little time as possible. The next speaker will be our former dean and present OSD2, Professor Siddiqui Mohammed Mehmood, sir. Sabko adab. A very good afternoon. Professor Siddiqui Mohammed Mehmood ka taaruf garche ki ek suraj ko chirag dikhane ke manind hai mere liye. Sir, takriban 15 saalon se administrative zimedariyan निभा रहे हैं जिसमें यूनिवर्सिटी के कोई भी एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव जिम्मेदारी ऐसी नहीं है रजिस्ट्रार इंचार्ज हो कंट्रोलर ऑफ एग्जामिनेशंस हो डीएसडब्ल्यू हो डायरेक्टर सीपीडीएमटी हो या डीन रिसर्च एंड कंसल्टेंसी हो और इस वक्त जो है ओएसडी 2 हैं और यूनिवर्सिटी uh, के मानू के ओनली सीनियर प्रोफेसर भी सर ही हैं अब तक जो फर्स्ट एंड ओनली सीनियर प्रोफेसर ऑफ द मान वक्त बहुत ही जो है कम है जो है तमाम जो है सिफात और खुसूसियात जो एक टीचर्स के अंदर होती हैं वो जो है सर के अंदर हैं बस जो है सर को مختلف अवार्ड जो है मिले हैं इनामात जिनमें खुसूसी तौर पर दो इनामात जो अनसंग हीरो अवार्ड फॉर हिज कमिटमेंट एंड सर्विस टू द सोसाइटी बाय आवर वाइस यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका एंड ऑनरिस कौसा डॉक्टर ऑफ डिविनिटी बाय हेनरी मार्टिन इंस्टीट्यूट हैदराबाद है इसी मुख्तसर तारुफ के साथ शुक्रिया थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू प्रोफेसर मोहम्मद मुशायद सर फॉर द वंडरफुल इंट्रोडक्शन डिग्नेटरीज ऑन द डायस ऑफ द डायस एंड द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स ऑफ द प्रोग्राम हु प्रोवाइडेड मी विद दिस वंडरफुल अपॉर्चुनिटी आई वुड लाइक टू बिगिन माय टॉक बाय सेइंग वो बात जिसका सारे फसाने में जिक्र ना था वो बात जिसका सारे फसाने में जिक्र ना था वो बात उनको बहुत नागवार गुजरी है यहां पर जो डिबेट्स हुए हैं और जिस अंदाज में बातें पेश की गई मैं समझता हूं कि बहुत कम गुंजाइश बाकी रही है लेकिन फिर भी मैं एक बात बतौर खास आपके सामने रखना चाहता हूं एंड द पॉइंट इज वी हैव बीन टॉकिंग एंड डिस्कसिंग अबाउट हाउ टू प्रिपेयर गुड टीचर्स मे बी through pre service training and also through continuous professional development million dollar question is whether we are selecting the right seeds to grow as a teachers aap bahut achhi zameen faraham karenge aap bahut acha achhi khad ya fertilizer denge aap bahut acha pani denge lekin agar aam ki fasal ugani hai aur neem ka beej agar boenge to aam ki fasal nahi aa sakti तो क्या हम राइटफुल इंटरेस्टेड कॉम्पिटेंट स्टूडेंट्स को सिलेक्ट कर रहे हैं कि वो टीचर्स बन सके 
एक बहुत ही ऑर्डनरी किस्म का नॉलेज बेस्ड टेस्ट हम कंडक्ट करते हैं और उसकी बुनियाद पर हम स्टूडेंट टीचर्स का सिलेक्शन करते हैं इज इट द राइट वे ऐसा नहीं कि मैं पहली मरतबा यह बात पेश कर रहा हूं यह बात इससे पहले भी कही गई है लेकिन इस पर सोचने की जरूरत है मैं समझता हूं रिफॉर्म्स की बात कर रहे हैं तो उसका आगाज यहां से होना चाहिए कि स्कूल लेवल पर अब जबकि आप सारे कोर्सेस ट्वेल्थ के बात करने जा रहे हैं और आप टीचर एजुकेशन को भी आप फोर ईयर इंटीग्रेट प्रोग्राम में लेकर आए हैं और हो सकता है कि यही प्रोग्राम आगे चले तो ऐसी सूरत में ट्वेल्थ तक आने तक क्या बच्चे को जिसको करियर गाइडेंस कही जाती है वो मुकम्मल तौर पर दी जा रही है उसका सिस्टम आपने स्टेब्लिश किया है क्या नंबर वन This area needs reforms in our country. Uh, guidance and counseling. Number two, we have been talking a lot about the pedagogy and the way in which we need to develop our teachers. मैं समझता हूँ कि इसको सिर्फ एक जुमले में ये बात कही जा सकती है कि whether it is theory or whether it is practical, our pedagogy should be research based. Every teacher should be the Columbus of his own method of teaching. जब तक के हर टीचर रिसर्च करके अपना खुद का एक मेथड इवॉल्व नहीं करता वो अपने स्टूडेंट्स को टीचर्स बनाने का जो काम है वो अच्छे तरीके से नहीं कर सकता नंबर थ्री देर शुड बी स्ट्रॉन्ग एम्फेसिस ऑन प्रैक्टिकल एक्टिविटीज थेटिकल बातें तो बहुत अच्छी है लेकिन साथ ही साथ उसका इंप्लीमेंटेशन किस अंदाज में हो रहा है द वे इन विच व्यू बीन सींग व्यू बीन वॉचिंग स्कूल बेस्ड Uh, experiences and uh, TP, uh, teaching practice and all that उस सिलसिले में बहुत ज्यादा काम करने की जरूरत है मैं समझता हूं कि हमारा कोई भी रिफॉर्म उस स्कूल बेस्ड एक्सपीरियंस को नेग्लेक्ट uh, करके नहीं हो सकता है फिर कोलेबरेशन वगैरह की बातें मैं यहां पर नहीं करूंगा इन तमाम चीजों के बावजूद अगर चाहे कि बहुत अच्छी खसूसियात के साथ आई टेप को इंट्रोड्यूस किया गया और एनसीटी का जो रोल है उस रोल को भी हम देख रहे हैं यहां पर यह बात सामने आई मैं उसको भी एक्सेप्ट करता हूं कि द अल्टीमेट रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इज ऑन द शोल्डर्स ऑफ वी द टीचर एजुकेटर्स तो उसके लिए जहां स्कूल टीचर्स के कंटिन्यूस प्रोफेशनल डेवलपमेंट के लिए एक अच्छे से एक्शन प्लान की जरूरत है वहीं पर मैं समझता हूं और जिसकी तरफ इशारा किया सर ने प्रोफेसर रमेश घंटा साहब ने आई रियली अप्रीशिएट इट कि टीचर एजुकेटर्स के भी कंटिन्यूस प्रोफेशनल डेवलपमेंट की जरूरत है अगर टीचर एजुकेटर सही हो जाए तो स्टूडेंट टीचर्स को सही तौर पर वो तैयार कर सकेगा मैं अपनी बात को यहां पर क्लोज करना चाहूंगा ये कहते हुए कि बहुत पहले जिसको देवजांस कल भी कहते हैं डायोजेनिस जिसे कहते हैं द ग्रीक फिलोसोफर ही वाज सर्चिंग ही यूज्ड टू सर्च इन द ब्रॉड डे लाइट अ लैम्प इन हिज हैंड ही यूज टू सर्च अल ह्यूमन बींग मैं समझता हूं कि अगर आज से पचास साल पहले वही डायोजेनिस की पैदाइश अगर होती तो कलेक्टिव विजडम के जरिए से वो इस नतीजे पहुंचता कि अब मैं इंसान की तलाश नहीं करूंगा अब मैं पहले एक टीचर की तलाश करूंगा अगर आज से पचास साल पहले वो पैदा होता तो शायद वो अपने लैम के साथ अगर उससे कोई पूछता कि आप क्या तलाश कर रहे हैं तो वो ये नहीं कहता कि मैं एक अच्छे इंसान की तलाश कर रहा हूं बल्कि वो ये कहता कि मैं एक अच्छे टीचर की तलाश कर रहा हूं और अगर आज डायजेंस डायजेनिस यहां पर आ जाए दोजांस कल भी सेमिनार में आ जाए तो मैं कहूंगा कि आज अगर वो डे ब्रॉड लाइट में लैम्प के साथ अगर किसी चीज की तलाश कर रहा है तो एक अच्छे टीचर एजुकेटर की तलाश कर रहा है क्योंकि उसको अंदाजा हो गया है उस डायजेनिस को आज अंदाजा हो गया है कि एक अच्छा टीचर ही अच्छा स्टूडेंट पैदा कर सकता है और एक अच्छे टीचर को पैदा करने के लिए एक अच्छे टीचर एजुकेटर की जरूरत है आर वी रेडी फॉर इट चॉइस इज आर्स थैंक यू सो मच यस सर वी आर रेडी फॉर इट आई एम श्योर वील ऑल सी दैट वी गेट back the glorious days for teacher education in that effort the panel here and all of us on the other side we will all start getting geared up for it and i hope we see better days and we again need to discuss and say teacher education is in better hands now and in a better shape thank you so much i request sumi to present the formal vote of thanks as briefly as possible thank yeah. you so much sure ma'am yeah so i extend my uh, hurtful uh, gratitude uh, on behalf of the organizing committee of the national conference maulana azad national university to all the esteemed panelists for their insightful contributions on today's discussion on reforms and innovation in teacher education the way forward so uh, 
uh, sirs and madam, the wealth of knowledge and diverse perspectives and have enriched our understanding of the challenges and opportunities in this crucial field. So your dedication in shaping the future of education is truly commendable. So I thank each one of you. Thank you so much.